Hi. So, firstly, we would like to thank Yanis and Helen Nim for the invitation to work on this quite special project and for bringing us together, which I think was the, the biggest gift in that sense. Um, and first of all, we would like to explain a little bit about our approach and why we decided that instead of working separately in the two given locations in uh, Iopetri Famacusta and in Laguna Famacusta, we decided to merge our research and residencies at NIM and to work together. So, so I think in this island, because it's kind of a little project island, you get used to get these um, projects one for south, one for north, and coming and meeting in the middle point and looking through different perspectives. But I think this issue about the sea was so global and like it was just there and it wasn't having any another identity crisis inside of it, like the sea be being a one. We definitely started with the idea that the sea is a common place. Yeah. And through this, we believe that it would allow us to explore and also to understand both localities. And for us, it was necessary in order to produce an artistic work. It was necessary to meet the people of both localities and not have any gaps in what one knows and the other one doesn't across, across the border, but to merge the two. Yeah. And, it also and also the topic about the fishermen. Like, I'm not an expert of a fisherman. She's not an expert of fisherman. It was basically about the fisherman. So it wasn't not about like our artistic identity, but it was about the sea and the fisherman and the relation and the land. So it gives us a power to look to this topic as a one. Yes. And our methodology for producing the video work that we produced, it includes interviews from the fishermen and film stills from the two localities. And we came to the conclusion that we wanted to use this methodology. Um, our inspiration was uh, pretty much the Zapatistas' journey of life, where they kept repeating the phrase, we want to hear from you, when they came to Europe to visit the different uh, communities. So that idea of we want to hear from you about your experiences um, and how, how you live and how this sea change affects the life of the people. That was our methodology when we encountered the fishermen in the, two, in the two localities. And I think we were lucky that this was in the sea because if this was in the land, the topic and the kindness was not going to be in this kind of a perspective. But I think sea gives that um, care with it to the people that they are much more aware of what is art, what is um, producing things together, what is the protecting the area that you kind of earn your money from. So the fishermen's having this um, amazing awareness about what they are, where they are being, what they are collecting, and how they can repair the sea. So we were kind of really surprised and glad that this is still going on. So it was really connected to the ecological political practices of community using its own land and like caring about its own land. Yeah. And what we realized, another thing, was the Leo Petri and Famagusta was the giving names for us. But when we were researching about this um, thing, Leo Petri is Famagusta as well. So we decided to use the Laguna for the Famagusta because it's called this space, which means a shallow water. And from what we learned, Leo Petri means like a small stones. So we wanted to connect these two places, not by like uh, space names, how it's um, dedicated on the map as a name after the 74, but like with the ecological representation of those places and like the local names, because we were saying like they both in Famagusta, like how can you separate Famagusta from Leo Petri if it's Leo Petri is also Famagusta. So our approach was, um, or our, our proposal, what came through this work was uh, to understand the sea as a commons. So a commons basically, um, it designates a, a given space where resources are managed, distributed uh, by the community for the community. So it basically, um, it links to self-governance of a space by the community that lives and works in that space. Um, and our proposal through this work was to understand 
the sea as a common, so not to see it across the border as two separate entities, let's say, but to see it as one, and how would possibly the fishermen use the ideology of the commons in order to come to mutual agreements of how their sea is being used, how their resources are distributed, and so on. And I think from the visuals, it's actually taken from the movie, and you, it starts with a space, then you will um, hear our um, questions in between. So we cannot say that this is a documentary, it's kind of a, still an artistic project, but it really represents about the um, Laguna fishermen and Leopetri fishermen, and they are telling about what is their problems and how is their lifestyle and what they succeed together or what they are expecting from the government. And it wasn't, I think, a luck to hear the same problems from the boat um, community because it's the same space, same geography, same um, challenges that is happening. And it starts with the um, cooperative, like they're aware of the, what they can fix. And they are doing their uh, meetings and they are trying to archive their own problems and find a solution through it. But it will end up yeah. how it will end up. It's not ending up. <laughs> they're, they're basically not being hurt by the two governments, but there is an infrastructure, let's say, of self-organization between the two fishermen communities in their separate localities. Our proposal in the case of this work is to bring that effort together. Because what you observe on both sides of the border is that the spaces are undergoing this uh, phase of so-called development, as Elada also pointed out in her presentation. And it feels like we're kind of leaving the enclosures in real time in both localities. Now, there is a slight difference between the two sides, that on the south we have more uh, development in the sense of uh, skyscrapers being built, uh, the tourism industry taking over, and not only restricting the areas where the fishermen can go out fishing and support their livelihoods, but it also pollutes the sea uh, to a great extent. And the fishermen were very much aware of the changes that are happening in the sea. In the coastal lines. In the coastal in lines. In the soil, yes. in the land, and how the geography change how the army is affecting the sea, how they are giving a restrict um, time limits for them to go to fishing. But in North, it was like really interesting to see that their new port is actually given by the military, the Turkish army, as an opportunity for the fishermen after their um, dock is collapsed in a British times, in a Famagusta port. So it was like seeing this contrast, how the military idea is actually um, becoming a better idea than a development. So because it wasn't having a, that kind of a development in Laguna area yet, like the hotels and the big ports and the marinas, um, they were still thinking that actually the military is something that um, preserves what we have because they are not building a new buildings, they are using what they have and they gave us a space. But in, I think in this... Um, I can add like a personal note, while doing this um, filming, I was still um, that person that afraid from the forbidden zones and put a camera on. So it was really interesting how the fishermen were kind of relaxed with the army and the military. And one guy just opened a phone to the general and said that, oh, we are filming. And the general was saying, oh, okay. And I was like, before that, for a week, I tried to get a permission from the police on the camera and the registering and the stuff, so they didn't let me to film there. But if you know a person, and if you know that relationships, and maybe that's hetero language, I guess, um, you can become the owner of that space. So it was really interesting how you own the space with this kind of a personal context. And it was, again, um, we were asking questions about, like, hearing from them, how it will change, how we see the sea as well, because they are the ones that are going every day to the sea and they are aware of what is going on and how it's changed. They, I'm not sure that they um, have this awareness of repairment, what they have, because they are still trying the traditional ways of getting support and financial. Um, but I think this was our aim anyway, like, showing them something that they are already doing, 
So this can actually be a proposal for them for future. So maybe they decide to work together and like create a one voice together, like how we did. But it's also, it became a question both for us and for the fishermen, if with the next generation of fishermen, we, we can still maintain that ecological awareness of living in certain sense of harmony with the sea since these practices are getting lost. Their livelihoods are being pretty much erased by the bigger uh, fishery industries. Um, and that's also something that we see in the south, in Yobedri, next to the next to the airport pretty much we have a big fishery which constantly pollutes the sea and puts the fishermen out of business so their way of life is being erased as we speak as well and that sense of care and awareness and potential for repair towards the sea is being erased together with them um, however yeah um, i think it was also another luck that whoever that we met as a fisherman was so kind and open and aware about what is going on but we also heard a lot of stories that not all the fishermen are like this um, so there's like a lot of economical reasons why they go for fishing um, because especially in north like they see a fish as a value of an economy because um, even if it's like uh, under regulation, you can catch that fish and sell it the next day in south. So nobody is actually taking care of that regulation. So that um, fish that you cannot catch could be somebody's um, everyday um, pocket money for their kids. So people, when they are talking and when they are giving these stories, they were saying that I don't blame them. I know that it's like a fault, but what can you do? Because if it's the system is corrupted, you will find a way to go live with it. So even that they are so carefully um, asking for a more regulations, like, um, and they have some regulations, but not like observations. So they are really in need of these observations. And everybody was kind of willing to stop for fishing at least two years because they were having this awareness of how it will fix the sea. Um, they are also aware of it's not possible because economical reasons is not get, going to give this by chance anyway. And that brings us the next generation yeah. because that was the key point of we are witnessing this now, but we, we will never witness this after 10 years if not something doing in now. So. So the structural lack of support from the states of both sides is something that pushes the, the fishermen towards practices such as overfishing or even pollution itself. And, and therefore we see this um, inability to, to change what is, what is happening at the, at the moment. And with both sides and with both of the, the cooperative in the north and with the fishermen's association, on the south, we see an insistence of both states to keep ignoring the demands for, um, for keeping the laws, or at least in the south, they were also calling for more laws that would be coming from the European Union that would be stricter than the laws in Cyprus. And please, like, let's keep those so that we can maintain a certain sense of an ecosystem in our sea, which is currently being completely um, at loss. But we also have to say that it's, in, at least in the case of the South, it's the, the Republic of Cyprus that encourages all these practices of overfishing, of polluting, of the tourism industry taking over the place. And so, of course, the regulations are not being kept or are not being met at all. Um, but then they, there is also no structural support for the fishermen whose yeah. livelihoods are being undermined. And they are seeing what's going on, like they are seeing for other um, economy reasons, like if you're a big hotel, you will get the funding and you will get the repairment. They are just asking why this is not a fisherman. And from that point, like I can say that this is not different than us, like what is happening in the lands for us and how our governments is actually taking action on our um, self-care is actually happening with the geography as well and the fisherman is um, can experience this without going a gallery or without going to a academic research. Like they are experiencing this pressure that they are not t getting taken care of by the geography by itself. 
Yeah, so yes. we want a bit uh, hop in between, I think, and that's where the science came. Yes, we've had the opportunity to speak to Hassan Denisak Bora, uh, sci like marine scientist of micro. He's researching microplastics, and he's part of the IMU, the University in Famagusta in the north. Um, and we've tapped a little bit into his research on microplastics and how healthy our sea is. Um, and he spoke to us about a lot of so-called invasive species, which when we say invasive species, we mean from the perspective of the fishermen. Um, but how these species um, arrived in the waters of Cyprus through the opening of the Suez Channel that happened in the 50s. And basically, they're kind of harming the, the fauna and flora of, of the sea of Cyprus. But they are, the science is looking into ways of how, through the production of artificial coral reefs, for example, uh, we can try to repair the sea and how uh, using algae or different seagrass uh, to transport that into non-rich areas can be a form of repair for the pollution of the sea up to a certain extent because also the effects of global warming, that those are irreversible as Hassan also yeah. uh, pointed out. And also I think he said, um like we cannot fix the sea, but we can repair. And actually in this point, because we were hearing about the fisheries, that is something really bad. It doesn't need to be happen. It's destroying our sea. But what he's also explaining, if the fisheries are actually done well, and if the system is working in the fishery, it could benefit your community as well. But there's like a profit, um, short term profit, short term profit in between. So it's actually, even that you build something to repair is kind of uh, helping collapsing more again. So it's like uh, this cycle of our land at the end. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. maybe we try to end on a bit of a positive, positive. note. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically what we really observed, as Nurtane pointed out before, was the kindness and the respect with which the fishermen see the sea and how they relationship is kind of like a, a symbiotic relationship as well uh, <clears throat> and for that um, there's also a willingness between the fishermen's associations on both sides to meet each other to talk with each other and see how they could potentially form a stronger voice for their common demand since the problem is common and very urgent and therefore the solutions could also be common and our our project or our approach is to potentially make them come together or provide for them the tools to come together in order to voice that potential for the common solution. I was telling Ilya that if we are in this room one more week, we are definitely <laughs> opening a fisherman association, <laughs> applying for a EU funding, and this will be our new job. <laughs> but we did not. <laughs> Your life can change after this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I think like, okay, nesting, like they're aware, and I think like this island identity is so shifted anyway because the Leo Petri fisherman was from Varosha and Famagusta fisherman from Denia, like a village from the south. So it was already in their natural system seeing other as a one. So they were in they were not kind of uh, separating south and north between humans, but they were separating um, they were always thinking in south is better and if you are in the south they were always thinking probably the north is better having regulations so they were just having this illusion that probably the other side is have a better profit better income better opportunities so I think if they match together and complain together uh, <laughs> we will have some good uh, results, but in here we ask again in our um, little abstract text that like our assumptions bear witness to our limitations. So it's good that we didn't limit ourselves from the way beginning, and me only looking for Laguna, and she's only looking for Leo Petri because it was kind of the same. 
and we ask them uh, also questions that they can also remember what they did good. So maybe it was going to give a bit of yes. um, action. But maybe just before you go there, I also want to point out that in the video we decided to have, as you see here in the presentation that is moving from left to right, we decided to have um, this kind of format to show Yopetri and to show Laguna in order to show that missing, missing image that the other has for the other. So our living with others, we're pointing to the fact that we really urgently do need to start living with others and recognizing others so that our images can at some point perhaps merge a little bit or at least we can have joint actions. Um, but for the present state, I think <laughs> the left and right was the format that we found in order to represent the experience that we had also on a daily basis crossing the border in order to carry out, out our research, but also how what the language with, is different and some yeah, people didn't understand the difference between Turkish and Greek. So this was kind of a, um, like a little notebook, sketchbook of us, that's what we did in a daily basis as an action in a video format. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>